Hello everyone and welcome back to a video I haven't done on for a while. It seems to be a regular theme. However, I thought, as soon as it's uh, Sunday, bank holiday weekend in the UK, and I have a little bit of free time while I wait for various hammers and parcels to arrive, I need a few bits to uh, finish the APEC 2 case that I'm building now. Uh, well, two cases actually, and a third demo machine. Anyway, so I thought I'd um, take a little bit of time now and do a little bit of uh, an update on 8-bit stories. Just knock my mouse off. Now I've um, I've done a few edits and uh, updates on 8-bit stories. It's my first book, uh, and initially. I released it with a few errors and omissions, which have now been updated. I have no doubt there are more, and if there are, then I will update those as well. And hopefully we will have a very legible book at some point. Anyway, uh, I'll sh flick through the book and show you a few of the updates that have been done. If you haven't purchased a copy, Please do. It's taken a considerable amount of time out of my life to get this done, and um, thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it, if I'm honest. Although editing and rewriting is a real pain in the neck. Anyway, so let's get on and uh, read chapter one. Chapter one is Our Friends Electric. Imagine a world where a powerful computer costs just 99.95. Imagine a world where this computer is just as fast or faster than anything else currently on sale. Was it the best? Well no, of course not, but it was cheap, powerful and in 1980 you could buy a 3.25 megahertz computer and take it home. Just take a moment to think about this. In 1980, you could buy a home computer and take it home for less than £100 for the first time in human history. Before 1980, this wasn't possible. Usually, you would have to spend four or five times that amount, and then you would have to build it yourself on the kitchen table. There were, of course, some exceptions. But most pre-assembled computers were for commercial or scientific use, and they were very expensive. Governments could buy the Freon-cooled Cray supercomputer in 1976 for a mere $10 million, and it would take a team of engineers a year to assemble it. More affordable was the Altair computer, which was released in the US at a modest $395. However, this was equipped with rows of switches and lights and was almost incomprehensible to use. It needed a boot sequence and memory locations had to be selected by mechanical switches. This would never catch on. What was needed was a low cost computer that used a cheap CPU, one that would undercut Intel and Motorola. Driving prices down would be the only option to start a revolution. In 1976, Zilog and Intel introduced new microprocessors that were faster than their predecessors and the new Intel 8080 could address a massive 64 kilobyte of memory. While the Xilog Z80 could run any program for the Intel 8080, it was both faster and cheaper. Meanwhile, the MOS 6502 was launched in San Francisco at a mere $25, far less than any comparable processor from Intel or Motorola. This led some attendees at the show to believe that the CPUs were faulty, not that it mattered. But what MOS did do at the show was humiliate Intel and Motorola. In return, both companies cut their retail price in an effort com to compete with MOS technology. This was the dawn of the new 8-bit era. A cheaper era that would enable and empower the average person to own a computer, eventually. The Texas Instruments TI-994 and 4A used a powerful 16-bit microprocessor. The TMS 
99,000. Zero, zero, 99,000. 99,000. But disaster, but Texas Instruments TI-994 and 4A used a powerful 16-bit processor, the TMS-99000. But this disastrously ended up using a slow 8-bit bus to communicate with the rest of the computer. It was originally designed to use an 8-bit CPU on Texas Instruments, but this wasn't working. So TI were forced to use the more expensive 16-bit TMS-9900 but in a crippled system. So what is an 8-bit computer or processor? Listed below are a few common variations of the CPU or processor that helped start the computer revolution. They would be used by many of the home computers that were popular during the 1970s and 1980s.